Hi, welcome to Christian Fire Poppy. It looks like Hanukkah 2022 was the conception date of the Revelation 12, September 2023 sign in the heavens. As soon as I feel like I've seen it all, I find more signs in the heavens telling a story. And there's even a confirmation of this on Pentecost 2023 that we'll take a look at. Now, are there really signs in the heavens? In Luke 21, 25, it says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So we have signs with floods. So just a quick reminder, if you haven't seen my previous videos, definitely check it out. Revelation 12 sign in 2023. There is a lot happening in the heavens and the asteroids have a story to tell. A giant theater in the sky. We have the child asteroid right in the middle of the birthplace, whose name means feast being born on September 18th, 2023. We have Heb, which means a Jew over here. Covenants, moon, Yeshua asteroid, the ark, Elijah Mina. We have Joseph Smith, Nelson Eric. The current LDS prophet, soul leader, we have America, United Nations, Crimea, Israel, Temple, Abraham. And now we know the conception day, Hanukkah, December 18th, 2022. So December 18th, 2022, before sunrise, the crescent moon is the spica. After sundown, the five bright planet display of Venus, Mercury, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars is beginning to appear. So it's pretty awesome. On Hanukkah, before the Revelation 12 sign, it was a moon spica conjunction and a five planet display. You could see all five visible planets displayed in the sky. Now, the reason this is the conception date is because of the birth is September 18th, 2023. Down here, that's the due date. You can look at a pregnancy conception calculator and you can see that right here, possible dates of intercourse that led to the pregnancy, the earliest date is December 18th. So that's the earliest time. So the conception date for the Revelation 12, 2023 sign, the child and feast, the birth is Hanukkah, December 18th, 2022. Now, Thank you so much to my friend Katie, who is getting baptized soon. She actually found um, some more clues for me and helped me figure this out. On God a Minute channel, there were some clues. One of those clues was that there was a blood moon tetrad, actually two blood moon tetrads pointing to the upcoming Hanukkah conception. So if you look here, you can see blood moon tetrad, 14. The year 14 to 15 and another blood moon tetrad in the year 21 to 22. And the wild thing is we've already talked about how Strong's concordance is a means that God is using to talk to us with this sign in the heavens. And he was using it beginning with the conception because all of these blood moons, the space between each of these sets of tetrads is 2,598 days. So two blood moon tetrad, all sets are separated by 2,598 days, pointing to December 18th Hanukkah. Because if we go to Strong's Concordance 2598, it's Hanukkah. So Hanukkah was a conception before the birth of the child of the Revelation 12, 2023 sign of the woman giving birth. So let's look at blood moon tetrad set one. So I actually went and double checked all of these dates. You can see right here. So the first set, 2,598 days. The second set, it actually said 2,599, but that's close enough for me. The third set, again, 2,599, close enough for me. The two sets in the middle and the last set, we have 2,598 days. And then there's two solar eclipses a set together and the solar eclipse set again, 2,598 days between these two solar eclipses. This is wild. This is amazing. Um, so many miracles in the heavens. It's 
hard to wrap my mind around it. But during the morning of March 20th, 2015, a total solar eclipse was visible. And you can see that was in Europe, Northern Africa, and Northern Asia. So visible in Europe on March 20th. And then there was a partial solar eclipse on April 30th, 2022. And this was visible in parts of South America, Antarctica, Pacific, and Southern Oceans. So there it is all together, 2,598 means Hanukkah. So these two sets of blood moon tetrads are pointing our minds forward, telling us to open our eyes and take a look in the heavens on Hanukkah 2022. So notice down here, it's spelled with a C-H. That's actually the more traditional spelling for Hanukkah. You can spell it either way. So what do we find on Hanukkah? Well, there's a nine month circling of the bridal marriage chamber and embryo asteroids. Now this is amazing because I kind of felt like this Revelation 12 sign was missing out because the Revelation 12 sign in 2017, it had Jupiter, that planet circling in the womb for nine months. And what do you know? This one has two things circling in the womb for nine months. So we have asteroid Ojima 3564. The Strong's Concordance is bride, young woman, and bridal chamber with marriage bed. And we also have, Sir, it looks like Serbia, you say Serbia 1564 asteroid, and the Strong's number means embryo. So we have a bride in the bridal chamber with the marriage bed and the embryo, and both of these you know, they fly all around, but during this nine month period, they are both circling around the womb of the woman Virgo. So from Hanukkah, December 18th, 2022 is the conception date to Revelation 12 signs, September 18th, 2023, the birth of the child date. Let's take a look here. So nine months in the womb from Pentecost 2022 to Revelation sign, 2023 on 9-18-2023. So here you can see Ojima, the bride, circles around the womb. You see Serbia, the embryo asteroid, circling around the womb. And let me show you on Stellarium so you can see this action for yourself. There's no reason to doubt this. It's so obvious. Let me show you. Okay, so we have Ojima the Bride. So if we go before Hanukkah, so let's start with sevens. So we're looking at July 2022. You can see up here in the Leo Lion area as we move closer to Hanukkah. So we're getting to, here we go, the 12. That would be this date. You can see as we move forward, it stays right in the birthing area until we get to 918. So there we go. And you can see from here on, it just continues to move out of there. So it goes farther and farther away. Let's see it going. Well, sometimes when I click it, there we go. We lost it. There we go. So you can see as it continues to move on, it just disappears. At least farther and farther away from Virgo. And there we go. Now let's take a look at the other one. There's the... Uh, All right, Serbia, let's go back to our date of 2022. Here we go, Hanukkah date. And as we get closer to the sign of the woman, on 918, you can see it just stays in the womb area. And then 
exits and leaves and does its own thing. There you go. So we have the asteroid child 4580 in the loins of Leo the lion on Pentecost, May 28th, 2023. And then we have the asteroid bride, Ojima 3565, in the conception area of Virgo woman on Pentecost, May 28th, 2023. So look at these locations of where the child is. The loins of Leo the lion. We know that the head of the 12 tribes of Israel, the lion, is Jesus. And we see here, Ojima, the bride, right here in the conception area. So I take this. To me, it looks like a Pentecost day confirmation because this is right in the middle of that process of the conception, the growing embryo, and leading into the birth of the child. The child starts here. Actually, let me show you the movement of the child. All right, so we have the child right here. And here we are on Pentecost 2023, May 28th. And as we travel in time to the Revelation 12 date of 918, you can see that's where it moves into place. There we go. Otherwise, the child just continues on. So, pretty amazing. It's awesome. There you go. That's our Pentecost confirmation. So, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I was talking a lot. I was really excited about Pentecost this year, and I didn't find that Pentecost confirmation until now. So, that makes um, just that whole experience even more meaningful for me. And so, I talked about this quote a lot. Uh, my ancestor, Lydia Knight, she was a woman who, she was actually the first member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who listened to the prophet Joseph Smith and was able to stand up and speak with the gift of tongues and the fiery spirit. And her and her husband were partakers of many of the first miracles during the restoration of the gospel. Lots and lots of miracles. They were the witnesses and they experienced them. And so one of her quotes is, cannot we who are of the later generation picture this grand meeting when Jesus and his angels were present and the glory of God was felt like a burning fire? What privileges our fathers and mothers enjoyed? How blessed were they? And as we look back, it seems to us that we could gladly partake of their many and severe trials if we might enjoy their glorious blessings. Now, President Nelson in April 2023 said, I know that his power is descending upon his covenant-keeping people who are armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. That to me sounds like Pentecost. And so on my channel, we did a 21-day challenge leading up to Pentecost, and we were doing family history work and temple work, and it really, really was a great experience. And um, for me, on the day of Pentecost, on May 28th, it was kind of cool because we went outside. We went for a little walk. My parents live out in this beautiful area. They had just moved. And if you can see up in this right-hand corner, this beautiful rainbow, the rainbow was so big. I had to take two pictures of it to get, you can see the right side of the rainbow up here. And it, the picture does not do it justice. It was the biggest, most beautiful rainbow I had ever seen. And it was so meaningful that it was on Pentecost. You can see, again, the right side of the rainbow. And here, the left side of the rainbow, looks like some of my slide got cut off, but it says church at church that day. So I went to church. It was on a Sunday, and I sat next to a woman in the ward. I had never been to this ward. My parents had just moved there, and I sat down next to a lady, and we chatted for a little while. And she actually, without me saying anything, she brought up Christian Homestead Channel. And then as we talked a little bit more, she recognized me and I just thought that was a pretty interesting, I was interested to see what would happen on Pentecost. And I thought it was interesting that somebody talked to me and they brought it up about my YouTube channel 
because I had just done that Pentecost challenge. And then I saw the world's most beautiful rainbow that day. So it was an amazing Pentecost for me. So here we go. The Revelation 12 sign 2023. A lot happening here. If you want to learn about the Jeremiah prophecy in your hand, watch my previous videos. But there are a lot of interesting stars. I love all these asteroids of the restoration. Joseph Smith, President Nelson, even have the Pope here. You have Nishimura Comet. Now, this comet is an interstellar comet. There have only been three that have ever been identified as far as interstellar objects. There's a lot going there. There's the temple, the Israel. So watch my other videos to find out about that. So child asteroid, the number is 4580. And this is pretty cool. So 45 plus 80 equals 125. And what do you know? The Revelation scripture, chapter 12, verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So the child asteroid 4580, the Strong's Hebrew number is feast. So when Jesus comes, there's going to be a feast, a great celebration. And the Strong's Greek is Christian of Thessalonica. I have not talked or thought about this much, but really, if you look at Thessalonians, this is the scripture of being caught up. So in Thessalonians chapter 4, 15 to 18, it says, They who are alive at the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them who remain unto the coming of the Lord who are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, er, arch, <laughs> that's a tongue twister, angel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then they who are alive shall be caught up together into the clouds with them who remain to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we have the Feast of Trumpets evening. It begins the evening of September 15th, and it goes to sundown September 17th, and September 18th begins the Revelation 12, sign in heaven. I just thought that was kind of interesting. 15, 16, 17, and 18 of First Thessalonians. All right, now, because that Pentecost experience was so impactful to me, I really had rainbows on my mind and the meaning of them, and so... It added a lot when I had the opportunity to go visit the Nauvoo Temple, one of the earliest temples of the Restoration. Something that's really cool about this temple that has to do with the Revelation 12 sign is that the Nauvoo Temple is covered in sunstones and moonstones and starstones. So a starstone was placed above each sunstone. The order of the stones recalled the woman described in Revelation 12, clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. So that's on the church website explaining how the Nauvoo temple, more than any other temple, is linked to the Revelation 12 sign. Now, I had the great opportunity to go and visit. It was actually on the martyrdom date anniversary that I was there with my entire family. Um, the martyrdom date actually later became the rededication date of the Nagu Temple. So it was a very, very special day to be there. And there were a lot of things that happened that day. It was, it was amazing. Um, some of it I'm not going to share, but I will share a few things. So when we walked into the celestial room, I thought it was so beautiful. There were these windows up here and the light was shining through on the chandeliers. And when the light shines through those prisms, it casts beautiful little rainbows onto the wall. And I noticed that right away. And you can see what's in here on the right and this wall, but on this left wall that you can't see, there's one picture in the entire room. And I was just so stunned because I'd been pondering on this rainbow sign and it was a beautiful picture of nature with a big, gorgeous rainbow in the sky. So this was absolutely beautiful. And then we were struck with the amazing coincidence that we were there traveling from Washington State. And it just so happened that one of our family friends that we hadn't seen in a long time was right there in the celestial room. And she is actually from St. George. We had no idea that she was there. Um, but her brother-in-law is actually the temple president of the Nauvoo temple. And it was just such a surprise. There were so many little surprises and coincidences that day. It was amazing. Um, and this is the big Washburn family reunion. 
And I thought this was cool as I was pondering on rainbows because wash, burn, it's water and fire. And it's water and fire that combines together to make a rainbow. It's the sun and the water, the rain and the sun that makes the beautiful rainbow. Um, so that that was a fun little connection that I have made. I like to think that my last name means a rainbow. So here we can see the beautiful rainbow that comes out the other side of the prism. And rainbows actually are full circles. It usually just has to do with your perspective. One last thing. Somebody sent me an email. This is from Jennifer Stevens. Take a look at this. She says, number one, last night I had a dream about the Enoch flood rainbow scripture in concept. Uh, I had written about this a month ago in my journal. Then I saw this post on my favorite YouTube today about Enoch and the flood. And this is this is the link for my video. <laughs> this is the, the link for this video that I did. Um, so she had a dream about it. And then the next day, um, or afterwards, then she saw my YouTube video. And then she says, number three, then I saw an email from my sister-in-law where she had sister. Very good. And then uh, she wrote a few other things here that I think are pretty interesting. She says, here's some info I wrote down in my journal a few months ago. Here's lesser known info on Enoch and the sign of the rainbow explained in the Joseph Smith translation. It's not just about the flood, but was originally given to promise the city of Enoch will return in latter days. Um, all who seek eternal life must follow the example of the Savior by being baptized and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The prophet Nephi said that the Savior showed us the gate by which we should enter is repentance and baptism by water. And then cometh the remission of our sins by fire and the Holy Ghost. And then are we in this straight and narrow, narrow path, which leads to eternal life. Uh, we will receive eternal life if we endure to the end, staying on the covenant path. So we have water of baptism plus fire and light of the Holy Spirit. And when you mix water and light, you get a rainbow. Uh, to me, the rainbow is actually the ultimate covenant symbol. Uh, the first mention of covenants in all the scriptures, the scripture in Genesis. Joseph Smith translation, Genesis 9.22. Uh, it's an amazing find. Uh, most people know the rainbow is a sign given to Noah that God wouldn't, won't flood the earth again, but it was originally given as a sign to Enoch and his people who were praying and desperate, praying desperately that a day of righteousness might be brought about during their day. And President Nelson just called on us to be this righteous people. And, and by the way, and President Eyring too, specifically to the sisters, to be the people that would um, create this society that joins with Enoch and his people. Okay. Um, they sought for it with all their hearts to establish millennial righteousness and peace throughout the earth. In response to their righteous prayers, the Lord covenanted with Enoch and his people that they would see such a day and that he would answer their prayers, um, but not in that era. According to, accordingly, God took Enoch and his city off the face of the earth to reserve them to come back in a day when their prayers could be answered. They would return in the latter days and complete their mission when as a result of their renewed ministry upon the mortal world, righteousness would sweep the earth prior to the second coming of Christ. Now compare with the president, with president Nelson's words, 2022. Uh, I think this is supposed to be October, 2022. One crucial element of this gathering is preparing a people who are able, ready and worthy to receive the Lord. When he comes again, a people who have already chosen Jesus Christ over this fallen world, a people who, Rejoice in their agency to live the higher, holier laws of Jesus Christ. I call upon you, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, to become this righteous people. Cherish and honor your covenants above all other commitments. God sets the rainbow in heaven as a reminder of his covenant to Enoch first, and then later adds the flood addendum with Noah. Joseph Smith translation 9, verse 21. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant which I made unto thy father Enoch, that when men should, should keep all my, co my commandments, Zion should again come on the earth, the city of Enoch, uh, which I have caught up unto myself. And this is mine everlasting covenant, <clears throat> that 
when thy posterity shall embrace the truth and look upward, and then shall Zion look downward, and all heaven, all the heavens shall shake with gladness, and the earth shall tremble with joy. And the general assembly of the church of the firstborn shall come down out of heaven and possess the earth, and shall have peace until the end come. <clears throat> And this is mine everlasting covenant, which I made with thy father Enoch. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will establish my covenant unto thee, which I have made between me and thee, for every living creature of all flesh shall be upon the earth. Uh, and God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I, sh I have established between me and thee, for all flesh shall be upon the earth. Rainbow, eternal round of ascension and descension. All rainbows are actually full circles, but most people only ever see an arc or semicircle because they are standing on the ground and the other half is cut off by the horizon. If you are in an airplane above the ground, you can sometimes see the full cir uh, circular rainbow. Well, and actually, uh, there are some cases where you can see the full rainbow in the sky like a full i saw it one time in texas and it was incredible it was really something else um but the conditions have to be right dnc3 uh god doth not walk in crooked paths therefore his paths are straight and his course is one eternal round so when i think of entering the straight and narrow path at baptism i envision it as the eternal round of the rainbow covenant path uh, where water and fire combine as we ascend and descend, trying to keep the, the commandments, fall down, then rise up again through repentance and grace until we eventually have the eyes to see what John the Revelator saw. Revelation 4. John sees the celestial earth, the throne of God, in all created things worshiping the Lord. I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and there was a rainbow about the throne. So we circle again and again until we finally reach Christ's presence, uh, see, sorry, until we finally reach Christ's presence and exaltation at the center. Uh, President Nelson, October 2022, quote, We cultivate faith in Christ by repenting daily and keeping covenants that endow us with power. We stay on the covenant path and are blessed with spiritual strength, personal revelation, increasing faith, and the ministering of angels. Living the doctrine of Christ can produce the most powerful virtuous cycle, rainbow cycle, circle. Um, creating spiritual m momentum in our lives. To me, the rainbow is not just a phenomenon of nature, but an, an eternal monument to a divine covenant. Most of us have lived all of our gospel lives without reali realizing that the covenant associated with the rainbow actually was. Most think it has something to do with not flooding the earth ever again. In reality, it is much more glorious. Quote, when Enoch's people obtained the presence of God, in their gifts of translation, they attempted but were not able to spread the gospel across the world and usher in an era of millennial righteousness. The world's rejection of their witness and, the, and a testimony actually brought about the flood of Noah. They mourned and, and prayed mightily with a combined voice that they might, they might be privileged to see a day when righteousness would flood the earth and evil would not be found upon, the, upon her face. Uh, that's from, let's see, Elder Orson Pratt spoke of Enoch and the covenant of the father with Enoch uh, in a conference address given in the old Salt Lake City Tabernacle, July 19th, 1874. Enoch and his people prayed that a day of righteousness might be brought during their day. They sought for it with all their hearts. They looked abroad over the face of the earth and saw the corruptions that had been introduced by the various nations, the descendants of Adam, and their hearts melted within them. And they groaned before the Lord with pain and sorrow because of the wickedness of the children of men. And they sought for a day of rest. Um, and it's interesting because President Nelson talked about that, you know, finding rest. Uh uh, and, and he said that we can do it now by living within our covenants, but I think he was also alluding to the millennium. They sought their righteousness. They sought that righteousness might be revealed, that wickedness might be swept away, and that the earth might rest for a season. In response to their righteous prayers, the Lord covenanted with Enoch and his people that they would see just a day, and that he would answer their prayers, but not in that era. Accordingly, God took Enoch and his city off the face of the earth and reserved them to come back in the day when their prayers could be answered. Uh, they would return in the latter days and complete their mission, uh, when as a result of their renewed ministry upon the mortal world, righteousness would sweep the earth prior to the second coming of Christ. 
God gave, quote, God gave them visions, portrayed to them the future of the world, showed unto them that this earth must misfulfill the measure of its creation. That generation after, after generation after generation must be born and pass away. In that after a certain period of time, the earth would rest from wickedness and the wicked would be swept away and the earth would be cleansed and sanctified and prepared for a righteous people. Until that day, saith the Lord, uh, you and your people shall rest. Zion shall be taken into my own bosom. Ancient Zion should be held in reserve until the day of rest should come. Then said the Lord to Enoch, thou in, thy, in all thy city shall descend upon the earth and your prayers shall be answered. Journal of Discourses, 17, page 148. This covenant with Enoch was so monumentous that God placed the rainbow in the sky to remind all future generations of this grand covenant to keep it before the winds of mankind, sorry, to keep it before the minds of mankind until it was fulfilled. Uh, and the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant which I made unto thy father Enoch, that when men should keep all my commandments, Zion should come again on the earth, the city of Enoch, which I have caught up unto myself. The rainbow we see in our skies represents God's promise to Enoch, that when men upon the earth should keep all my commandments and are righteous, righteous at last, uh, that he will fulfill their righteous prayers and bring Zion back to the earth in an era where their missionary labors will bring the that righteousness which shall cover the earth in the millennial day and by extension when zion is upon the earth christ will come and begin his millennial reign in uh in words that shake the earth the god of heaven proclaims that when we enoch's counterparts in the latter days embrace the truth and understand our relationship to enoch zion and employ our hearts and faith and hands in building up zion upon the earth that enoch and his people will look will look downward and all the heavens quote shall shake with gladness and the earth shall tremble with joy end quote then enoch and the bow shall be in the cloud and i will establish my covenant unto thee so of course i had to look up the word bow the bow the bow in the cloud meaning the rainbow in the bible the strongest concordance number was 7198 asteroid 7198 is called Montelupo. And let's take a look at that. All right, so Montelupo, you can see right here that Montelupo, now my other video, I talked about how, um, there's a beehive cluster over here. If you go to Cancer the Crab, there's the beehive cluster. And the beehive is a symbol for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So right there, it's also called Presip, meaning manger. So let's take a look at Montelupo and let's look on May 28th. That was Pentecost. So, Mons Lupo. What do you know? Right there in the Beehive area. Not even surprised. So, we watch how it travels. Let's see where it goes. As it gets closer to the date of the Revelation sign. September 18th. There we go. There we go, it's getting closer. I think this is actually pretty fascinating as you move forward in time. It travels closer to the woman. And when you go to the date of the October 14th eclipse, it's right over her eye. There you go, the path of the bow, the rainbow. All right, we also have Broche, asteroid 3144, and it intersects with the moon in the Revelation 12 slide, of course, on 918-2023 in our state 7 and 8. 
Now, I make the distinction of the hours because the moon moves really fast. And I won't show you. You can look that up. Go to Solarium. Have a little fun. But you can see right here, there's the moon. And there is Broche. And Broche is another word for a witness, a martyr. Now, I mentioned that I was in Nauvoo. And I was thinking about not only that rainbow symbol, but also how on the day we were there, it was the date of the martyrdom. And something that really stuck out to me was that the day after we left that trip, we were there for a very short time. And on the airplane to Nauvoo, my son, Christopher, he kept saying, mom, there's going to be a tornado in Nauvoo. There's going to be a tornado in Nauvoo. He was so worried about it. And I said, I'm sorry, your sisters were teasing you. There's not going to be a tornado. We don't get tornadoes in Washington. I didn't know why he was talking about that. And I assured him, I grew up in Illinois. I have never experienced a tornado. We will, that will not happen. Um, it turns out there was a tornado the day after we flew out of Nauvoo. Um, technically it was called a derecho. So a big wind, it created a lot of damage, tore down a lot of trees, a lot of things, all the Nauvoo structures and the people were okay. There were a lot of miraculous stories that came from that, but I thought it was pretty interesting that it was actually just a few days after the martyrdom date. The martyrdom was on June 27th, a Wednesday, and the derecho happened on the 29th, just a couple days later, the day after we left. So that made me think about how Joseph Smith, he was a martyrdom. He was a martyr and he was a witness. And this word actually means the same thing. So you can see right here, a martyr and a witness, 3144. So the Nauvoo Temple was rededicated on the anniversary date of the Joseph Smith martyrdom. And look how it is aligned with the moon on the date of the Revelation 12 sign. This is a really awesome quote. This is in the Joseph Smith papers. So Joseph Smith restored the covenant blessings of Abraham and so was driven out most likely in the likeness of what Father Abraham went through because the people cried, oh, monstrous new revelations. They could not abide any new revelations. They had everything they needed. So here we have a sermon given on August 15th, 1842. It says, next comes Abraham with knowledge or revelation of what is the result, why he becomes a pilgrim in a strange land. Nobody believes in his religion because he had new revelations. Adam's, Enoch's, and Noah's. Nobody doubted that Adam was the first man the Lord made. None disputed. Enoch's pillar was a living monument of his faith and works. And the living Noah himself with his ark resting upon the mountain and the majesty of the rainbow spanning the earth from time to time were witnesses that the old revelations were true. But that pass over Abraham is an imposture with new revelations. Why? He says, God appeared to him in the plains of Mamer and that he has seen angels and eat and drink with them. Oh, monstrous, drive him from his country and kindred. We cannot abide his new revelations. So the point of this that he was making was that the people were rejecting Abraham for his new revelations. And the same happened to Joseph Smith. And Joseph Smith helped to bring about the restoration of the covenants of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. If we're talking about rainbows, something that goes along with rainbows is Noah and the ark. So let's look at the ark and flooding. So I looked up ark and the number Strong's Concordance for Ark is 2787. And you can see it right here. Dorish. And I looked up the number for uh, floods. So for floods, that number is asteroid 4215. The Strong's Concordance is 4215. And the name of that is Camo. You can see it down here. It's pretty interesting. Both the Ark and the flood asteroid are right very, very close to the moon on the date of the Revelation 12 sign, 9-18-2023. So this was very, very fascinating to me because I've had a real focus on the ark and floods and the rainbow. And it was actually something that God pointed out to me at midnight on New Year's Eve. So let me tell you that story. So for one, little did I know, when God led me to pick the word ark for the year 2023. So every year I pick a word for the year and I prayed about it. So on New Year's Eve that I would experience some of the greatest miracles along with rainbows appearing to store away in my Ark of the Covenant. 
if you think of that as an analogy for your mind. So just like inside the actual ark, they put all these remembrances of miracles, the manna, the budding rod, and hence leading me to these things came from three YouTubers. So it's pretty awesome. So two, little did I know that I would be getting on YouTube this year. And three, little did I know I would be getting on an ark, a cruise ship, and sailing to the Mediterranean during the high holy days marked by the revelation sign 2023 in the heavens. So if you comment, I will be out of town for a while. I will be sailing on a cruise ship out in the ocean. And in Luke 17, 26, it says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. And I think just being on a cruise ship during this time is really symbolic to me. And it's pretty cool because I did not pick the time. I did not. It's all of the adults on my extended family side. And they were the ones who picked the date. And so that was pretty amazing to me, just the timing of all of it. So 2023 began with arc storms. And unprecedented flooding is peaking in September. So right now we have some of the most terrible, deadly floods that are happening. So Libya flooding presents unprecedented humanitarian crisis after a decade of civil war left of vulnerable. So this is CBS News. Also says that Libya floods live. Fears death toll could double as tens of thousands missing after river tsunami. So that sounds really, really awful. Um, at the beginning of the year, one of the first things on Christian Home said he did a whole video about the first major event of 2023 was an arc storm. He says, here we go. First major event of the year, California arc storm, flooding, bomb cyclone, landslides. And recent ones that he's posted, and you can check these out to get more details on all of the flooding that's happening right now, is swept into the sea. We have not witnessed that level of catastrophe before. It's about the Lib Libya flooding and the death toll. And we also have, um, a few weeks ago, he posted, the world is flooding right now. Unbelievable footage. Spain, Brazil, Bulgaria, Greece, Turkey, all over. So one of the reasons, one of the main reasons, actually, that I picked the word arc. So on New Year's Eve, I prayed to know what my word of the year should be for 2023. And I figured I would go to sleep. But I thought, well, before I go to sleep, I'll just check my phone really quickly. And a video just popped up and started playing. And I was so surprised because I hadn't clicked on it. And I didn't understand why this was just automatically playing on my phone. And it was a YouTube channel that I was not aware of. Um, I am, I have since become more aware of it. And it's Watcher Palmer, who's a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So until it started playing on my phone, without me clicking it at midnight on New Year's Eve, right after I prayed, we had just watched the Indiana Jones movie about the Ark of the Covenant until midnight. So that's what my family did as it was getting closer to midnight because we were so tired. And it's interesting because Wendy Nelson had just mentioned in the October 2022 general conference, it was a commentary on that conference afterwards when she was speaking to Canada. She said she felt like the prophet had asked us to get on the Ark. So after having that little YouTube miracle where he was talking about the Ark of the Covenant and he mentioned Indiana Jones. And anyways, you can see that at that time and he talks about the new year and things. Um, I decided, well, I guess my word is going to be Ark. So it was very interesting because God used three YouTuber miracles to influence and inspire me and it's interesting to see how the year has actually played out. And I can still say that arc, arc is the best word of the year. So one, we had flood the earth. So flood the earth, the city of Enoch, the covenant and rainbows. This was my first real interaction with Christian Homestead. And that had to do with a dream that I had and getting involved with flooding the earth and sharing the Book of Mormon. And then number two, I had the the night where I, that was my clue to pick the word Ark because he popped up and was talking about the Ark of the Covenant when I had just watched Indiana Jones, Ark of the Covenant. And he talks about how we should really embrace the relics, how we shouldn't shy away from these miracles and, and these things, these, these, um, 
these relics and these ideas that we might think of, oh, that sounds too, um, you know, hard to believe, but, but that's God is a God of miracles. And then a third influence has been Hannah Stoddard. And we've just had some very fortuitous, interesting conversations. Um, I was a guest right after Hannah Stoddard. And one of the things that we've talked about is how rainbows seem to just appear at these fortuitous moments, right at the exact perfect time in our lives. And it was just kind of interesting to share that with her. And so each of these YouTubers, they're all members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And probably the three of them and me, we might not agree on every single detail of everything, <laughs> every truth that we ever say. I think that every person has um, some truth and some misgivings. And I think it's best if we can all just assume the best and look for the good in everybody. But I think all of these YouTubers have great hearts and are trying really hard to do what God wants them to do. And I think they love Jesus Christ. And so I love listening to people that love Jesus Christ and I'm not quick to judge. Even if they say something that I feel like is wrong, I just listen and I use it as an opportunity to discern, discern truth from error because all humans have sin and error. So it's up to us to turn to God and to decide on the truth that we want to put into our hearts and minds. What miracles, what truth are we putting into our ark? Because those things are, are the things that will help us when the floods come. So my first interaction with Christian Homestead Channel was because of a dream, and this connection eventually led me to start this channel with his encouragement and discover all these miracles in the heavens, and I'm so grateful for that because this has been just amazing and faith-building. When I was first thinking on starting the channel, I was terrified. I hated the, day, the idea. In fact, I knew that when I went on there, that he was going to probably encourage me to start a YouTube channel of my own. And I kind of told myself in my head, I would only consider it if he said this certain phrase that was very unlikely for him to say. And I'm not going to share what it, what it was because it's, um, it's personal, but he did say this phrase and that's how, that's how I knew I was, I was in trouble. So anyways, <laughs> and then later as I was thinking about it, um, and just praying about it, I just woke up hearing the phrase, do it for my glory in my mind. It wasn't a voice or anything like that. It was just in my mind when I woke up that if I was going to do it, I should do it for the glory of God. For the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Psalm 19, 1-3. Now, please forgive me for talking so much about myself here and how things started with the YouTube channel. I just really want to get the point across that this really was God doing everything from the very start. And all I was doing on my end was trying to be obedient. And I say trying because I was very disobedient. And no matter how many signs I was given, I kept trying to get out of this. Um, but really, glory be to God, and I love Jesus Christ so much. And really, personal revelation, the great privilege that we have to converse with God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, and to hear what it is that they want to do, and to have the scriptures, and the signs in the heavens, and so many things, the words of the prophet and apostles, and the restoration are amazing gifts. And Thank you for listening today. And coming up next is just a little tag on so you can see this is a throwback to January when I first went on to Christian Homestead and I was explaining in January at the beginning of the year why I had picked the word ARC and other such things. Thanks. It's about the mysteries and the miracles of the ARC. And this is kind of cool on. So looking back, like I, I feel like it's so cool when you have the Lord in your life, you can look back and say, oh my gosh, like I had no idea that this would be this perfect, almost like symbol of what the new year would be. Right. So we were celebrating with our family. We decided to celebrate with just, uh, you know, our family and our kids. And, um, at the end of the night, we were just all getting kind of tired. We put the little kids to bed and my husband said, let's watch, um, let's watch, uh, uh, what is it? the, the arc, the, the arc show, the, <laughs> What did I say? 
the um Indiana Jones. Thank you. Sorry, having oh, okay, a, okay. a brain freeze. Indiana Jones. <laughs> he was like, let's watch Indiana Jones. And um, because our kids love that, you know, and every time we go on the Disneyland ride, we're like, oh my gosh, we need to watch it. For some reason, we never think to watch that movie. So they're like, okay, we gotta watch, we gotta watch this movie. Um and so we finished watching that and it was really late at night. And I'm about to go to sleep. And I remember, oh, you know, every year I like to think of one word for the year. And so I I just I'm like, well, maybe the answer will come to me in the morning when I wake up or you know, maybe right now. And so I just I said a quick prayer, I was gonna go to sleep. Then I thought, well, I better just open the scriptures for one second in case God has an answer ready, right? If you're, if you're asking you start a conversation with God, you better give him a chance to answer. And yeah, boy, did he because I opened up my phone. And it was like a YouTube video just started playing. It was not a YouTube person that I generally listen to. And I hadn't even pressed play or anything like that. Um, and I thought, well, that was really weird, but maybe there's a purpose. So I listened to it for a little bit. And he's talking about Indiana Jones. He's talking about huh. um, relating the Ark of the Covenant and how, you know, there's some things on there, but like that are true and not true, but how we can use these things, have conversations with our children and how, um, you know, there you look at the restoration, you look at the scriptures, and um, you have things like the Leahona, and you have um, just the miracles that are inside of our covenant. And we need to teach our children about these things and not shy away from um, the miracles of the gospel. And so, anyway, so it was just, I was like, wow, okay, that was definitely a message that I needed to hear after just showing my kids that movie. Um, and that just came to me that ARC was going to be the word for the year. And, um, so I found what, that. What, so, what was the word of the year for last year, if you don't mind me asking? So last year was mindfulness, and oh my gosh, I learned so I learned my more than my fair share of things about mindfulness. I would say one of the best things that I learned about mindfulness was actually taking care of your mind, like being conscious and proactive about. I think your brain is a very powerful tool, and I think we talk about faith a lot in the church, but I think there are a lot of uncommon, like tools and things that. If we can like get out of the box, I think a lot of us just think, oh, faith means I'm just hoping really hard. If I just like hope harder is going to happen. And that's a part of it. But I think there are a lot of ways to um, fine tune our faith. And part of that has to do with the way that we use our brains and taking care of it and keeping out things that are distracting, things that are degrading. And um, there are also different tools for kind of just being mindful calming our brain getting those like I actually did a lot of just kind of scientific research as well looking at like getting into a place where your brain waves are kind of at an even level and you're therefore able to receive you have to get your brain to a certain point so you can better receive revelation and um and I feel like it has helped me immensely I think it is part of I think this past year of working on that has helped me this year to be receiving so much more help it's really interesting that you would have um, mindfulness last year and then the arc this year because um, there's different schools of thought. I, I think in Judaism where they compare the temple, like Solomon's temple and the second temple to the human body. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it's almost like it it's uh, designed after the human body. Like when you go into the temple mm -hmm. uh, back in those days, you should know the Ten Commandments. So that's like the Ten toes you know and the two feet yeah. the two tablets yeah. ten toes yeah. you go in and then you know you have the altar and you also have with with solomon's temple you have the um i think it's called the bronze sea which essentially is now baptismal font which is like it's a birthing area right 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 and then you go into the sanctuary and you have the showbread you have the menorah which is like you could compare that to like a stomach and a heart, like the light of Christ is in your heart, the Holy Ghost is in your heart, and then yeah. the altar of incense, which is like praying. But then when you go into the Holy of Holies, it's uh, shaped like a cube, and you have the ark in there. And the ark, uh, according to this, the way that some people look at it is kind of like the mind. It's like the brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. You have like Joshua's staff in there. And then you have the Ten Commandments that are in there, like things that you're supposed to like. It's like it's like a symbol symbol of having God's laws in your mind and remembering mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. manna, which was a miracle mm -hmm. that sustained Israel as they were traveling. Mm -hmm. So I feel like those two those two things are very related. Yeah, yeah, no. And I have um done a little bit of I have heard you know some of what you said, and so I think that's but it's I'm definitely a deep diver. Like I definitely 
did a deep dive. I'm very open-minded, so I'll go to all kinds of resources, um, but I keep the restoration of the gospel, the prophets, the apostles, the scriptures. That's my core. So I'm not afraid to read things that, you know, might have some truth and some false in there. And to me, it's an exercise in discerning truth and error. And I just collect up all the truth that I can from all the different sources that I can find it and just kind of try to apply that. There, I had like woken up really early in the morning, like 4 a.m. And I just recorded the scripture in psalm 90 and so i had no idea what was in psalm 90 but i just felt like i need to go to psalm 90 and it was so interesting because you read about it and it talks about it basically encompasses all those things and it talks about the number 1000 fires and floods and um and then at the very end of it it talks about what it is that we need to do to escape and we need to you know apply our hearts unto wisdom and we need to repent we need to also i feel like a big part a huge part is to um, have worship and wonder and so that's what i'm trying to do with my site and that's what i want to promote is for people to worship more and to have wonder and to see the beauty and to focus on the glory of god and um and to have the beauty of the lord be upon us and it's um on here so at the very end then it talks about the floods, it says the floods have lifted up. Oh, Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, day than the mighty waves of the sea. And then thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. So um, there's a lot of answers there about, you know, sharing our testimonies and sharing the truths that we've learned um, and just remembering that um, God rules. And, you know, with my heritage, it was kind of cool because when I was first talking to you, I, I marked on here how I made just a little personal note that it says that, you know, God reigneth. And I made a little note about um, Lydia Knight and she used to say, anyway, so this is kind of cool because when I was first um, talking to Jared, so just for everybody that doesn't know the story, when Jared and I were first talking, we talked on the phone before the interview and I was talking about how, you know, we need, this is, you know, women have a special role to play in preparing for the second coming. And um, as I'm just starting this online journey, um, for me, that I was trying to think of, I like to think of people, right? I like to think of scriptural people and people in my life who I can kind of follow in their footsteps. And um, like, I just mentioned Hannah Stoddard to Jared. And when I said that, yeah. like, <laughs> Jared was just like, I just had an interview with Hannah Stoddard today. So it's just, kind of funny how it was, it was just, so random yeah it was, so so, random. It was like i literally just talked to her a few hours ago yeah and i hadn't mentioned the name of any other person in the entire world and i was just like oh yeah like hannah stoddard like she just she's just been sticking out in my mind as a woman in modern days who is sharing her testimony and doing everything that she can to um, share these beautiful truths with the world in the best way that she can um and so i felt like that was such a tender mercy so i'm like oh it's just miracles upon miracles and now i get to follow that person because that was the last interview that you did and so it's kind of cool because first we had a descendant a knight a descendant of the knight family and they were like the biggest champions and friends they never felt like joseph smith had so many friends that fell away but joseph smith called them his faithful friends and he pronounced so many blessings upon the knight family and their posterity because they were so true and faithful throughout that whole thing and um so you have a knight and she was talking about miracles and blessings and then you have somebody who's talking directly about joseph smith and she's all about like getting back to the basics and the power of the restoration of the gospel and how we need to like really focus on the book of mormon and on the so many like amazing truths that joseph smith gave us because when we do that that is how we find those miracles and um and so that was just a really cool thing so i sent her um a little message and she just said oh yeah lydia and i um just explained her i'm like you know told her that story and she said oh yeah lydia nice motto you know god rules and um so i thought that was really cool because that is something that i think about too so again it's just amazing how on the internet you can find people that have these um experiences so and yeah. then anyways then i posted here on at the very end jared degree the arc because i thought this is amazing because oh gosh, you notice yeah. like the the a rk and how the k i mean it's just funny how things in the world like i'm like okay so i picked the word arc and then the first thing that like crazy thing in the world that's happening, the world is calling them arc storms and you go into all the details about like why they do that.